Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, we're at the Kilmer Mansion again in Binghamton, New York, and um, we are going to be doing a public investigation again, and obviously we're going live, and I'm glad uh, that you guys are all watching. Um, I'm going to just go over a little bit, a few things with you guys first. Um, first of all, um, if you guys can mute your phones or shut them off. Um, if you want to use your phones to take pictures, that's fine. Just mute your phones. And there is a restroom over here if you need to use a restroom. We are going to take a break in between. So everybody can use the restroom and we'll regroup and then we'll go from there. Um, if anybody wants to um, investigate with us, we can give you guys a K2 meter and you guys can be a part of our um, investigation tonight if you like. Um, we've done that in the past. Um, also, um, if um, you need to leave to use the restroom, let one of us know so one of us can walk down with you. Yeah. You know, for upstairs. Um, There's a bathroom. Oh, there is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Sure. Yeah. Because one, one time it wasn't working and I knew that. Oh, <laughs> it should be working. Yeah. All right. So um, I'd like to thank you, uh, Lisa and the Kimmer Mansion for having us again. And um, we just want to let you know that all the proceeds for tonight goes back to the Kimmer Mansion so they could help restore this beautiful, beautiful mansion. This is gorgeous. And this is Lisa, and she's going to tell a little bit of history about the Kilmer Mansion for us. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to Kilmer Mansion. I'm so excited to have everyone here. Uh, just a brief history. Uh, this is actually the Jonas M. Kilmer residence. It was built for Jonas Kilmer and his wife, Julia Sharp Kilmer, in 1898. Um, their son Willis Sharp Kilmer had a mansion next door and Jonas and Julia lived here until they, they actually both died in 1912, only a few months apart. And so they didn't live here for all that long, uh, but the mansion did stay in use even after their deaths of jo uh, their son Willis. Well, there's varying stories. He may or may not have lived here himself. We do know for sure that he threw parties here. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was a, a big racehorse enthusiast, a big uh, sportsman of all kinds. So there was definitely lots of parties, lots of activity in this house, both as a residence and later as perhaps Party Central. <laughs> um, and then the mansion was purchased by Temple of Concord in 1950, who's owned it ever since. Um, is there anything in particular you would like me to cover? Or? Um, I, we know that um, he was quite the ladies man. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he likes the ladies. Well, let's have quite the reputation. I'm unfortunately not the best storyteller on that front, but <laughs> he definitely, he was married three times, um, and he lived next door with his wife, uh, Sarah Jane, Sarah Jane Wells Kilmer, uh, later Ellison after Willis died and she remarried. Uh, but he, his second wife was the former ward, his and his wife's ward. Um, so she was quite young and he was quite young when they got married. And so that's a bit of a tantalizing tale. And then his third wife was his manicurist. <laughs> and was, I think, 40, 30, 40 years younger than he was when they got married. He was, and then there's all sorts of stories about the second wife divorcing him because of his numerous affairs. And yeah, he wasn't necessarily the most upstanding citizen. <laughs> <laughs> so, and also uh, he um, sold Swamp Road. Yeah. So the story of Swamp Road, Swamp Road was was originally created by his uncle, Sylvester, Sylvester Andrew Kilmer, Doctor Kilmer. He was actually a medical doctor. He very much believed that Swamp Road, which was the most famous, and the multiple other botanical creations that he came up with, um, really did help cure people. He was not a charlatan. He really firmly believed he was helping people. Um, his creations did have all kinds of herbs in them and may actually have been helpful in some regards. They were also at least 10% alcohol. So <laughs> people might have felt better drinking them for any number of reasons. Um, the, then uh, Sylvester Andrew Kilmer um, convinced his brother Jonas to come up from, I think he was in New York City, 
and uh, to help him run the business. And then Willis was a college student at Cornell studying marketing, and then Willis came along and he's the one who marketed Swamp Root and who made them their, their money that paid for this house and the one next door. And there's a quote of something about, um, someone once asked Willis what Swamp Root was good for, and he said, about two million a year. Um, <laughs> so um, that was that's the Swamp Root story. But I do always like to clarify that the creator really thought he was doing good. It was Willis who kind of thought, hmm, I know what we can do with this. <laughs> so. And he also owned a horse, uh, Willis. Right? He owned many horses. He had his own very successful breeding program. Um, the one people know the most is Exterminator. Uh, affectionately known as Old Bones, who unexpectedly won the Kentucky Derby in 1918. But there were Sunbow and Sunbriar and a whole other stable full of very famous, very successful resources. And he was deeply dedicated to his breeding program and is very well thought, but, you know, not necessarily as a person, but as a breeder. He, he had quite, quite the innovative ideas, I guess, at the time. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So we're going to get started. Um, we're going to get. I'm going to go get some um, K2 meters and hand them out to you guys, and you could be a part of our investigation tonight. Okay. So we're going to get started. You want to do it? Okay. Uh, there's a lot of work. 